Teardrop trailers of this size typically weigh over 1,000 pounds, but not this one. How does 480 pounds sound to you? One finger, literally one, one finger. And what if I told you the manufacturer claims it's not only the world's lightest, but also the strongest full-size teardrop trailer on the market? Well, these weight and strength advantages come from one thing, a 100% carbon fiber and fiberglass constructed cabin. I took Atlas from Aero Teardrops up into Washington to see how this innovative trailer was made and to show you the two different models they have available. Spoiler alert, check out what one of the models can do. And as usual, you're going to want to stick around to the end of this walkthrough as I'll be sharing the three things I like about this trailer and the three things I believe can be improved. Hi, I'm Matt with uh, Rift Carbon Campers. We're located out of Tacoma, Washington. Uh, we make the world's lightest and strongest full-size teardrop trailer. It is 100% carbon fiber and fiberglass construction, and it is one piece, everything from the floor to the walls, all the way around to the roof. There is no seams in the construction of this trailer. The benefit being, without seams, there's no place for this to leak. There's nothing to seal on top. There's nothing to crack open. Uh, there's no wood to soak up any moisture that may leak through your trailer there's less points for water to get in. Not only is this the lightest, I wanna stress, this is not just the lightest trailer, but it's also the strongest. There's nothing flimsy about it. Everything from the trailer, even the fenders are completely carbon fiber. The roof is solid. There's no weak spots. <laughs> so everything you see on and in this trailer comes standard. Um, we have the, it's a Yakima rack on top. Everything, well, everything you see is Yakima. Yakima awning, basket, roof rack. Um, and the cool thing about this is too, is that loaded with everything you see here, everything, it weighs just about a thousand pounds, just under a thousand pounds. And it's got the Timberin uh, 2500 HD suspension underneath it. So you have about 1500 pounds uh, of extra of extra weight that you can load onto this. Before we break down into too much, I'm gonna to head to the nose of the trailer, break this thing down from the nose back. So up front here we have, we call this the beak box. It's a storage box that's broke down into two compartments. The first of which is in the front, just some additional storage, anything from power cords, wheel locks. On the sides here, we got two of these compartments on either side. And so up here is all of our, our electronics. We have a 2000 watt Renogy solar inverter, 100 amp hour a lithium ion battleborne battery. Next to our battery, we have our solar hookups right here. Um, and this trailer is one of our prototypes. So we take this thing out a lot. It is well used. It's got some scratches to prove it. <laughs> During the summer, I probably sleep more, more nights in this than I do at home. And so this here is something that on our newer models, um, we have a pull out here for easy access for solar and you don't need to open this up every time you need to hook up your solar panel. Our shore plug-in, if you take a look at our frame, um, it is powder coated aluminum frame. Um, we have these Nerf bars around the side for extra protection of your trailer. Even right here is carbon fiber. And so, and this is a half inch thick panel of carbon fiber. And so you can stand on it just like you can stand on everything else. Very, very strong. Same thing in the back, working our way up over here because we're all about uh, protecting the trailer. It's like we know that there's all kinds of rocks, there's all kinds of uh, debris out there you might back into, run into. Who are you? This is Gus. Oh, I am Gus. So let's take a look at the galley inside. So in the galley, again, everything on this trailer comes standard. We have a dual zone fridge and freezer, mini Traeger pellet grill, um, all your basic uh, utensils, and a pass-through. Drew's favorite, the pass-through. We even have a little extension off of the kitchen right here. Take this guy. Slide it in there. Put your grill or your favorite cooking device on here. And you just expanded your kitchen. And this even, too, 
is carbon fiber. We got your power hookups right here on this side. We got another one over there. Both have, uh, we have four USB hookups as well, so you can charge your phones, your devices. So the inside, and this is one of my favorite parts about the trailer, is that the doors open upwards. So everything on the side of this trailer, this is all molded in one piece, and then we see and see out the profile of the trailer and the door opening, and then we take the cutting for the door and we make our own custom made door. And so what this allows us to do is we have a nice wide opening. So for some of you bigger guys out there, you wanna sit right here, you're not squished on the side, you got plenty of room to move around. And with the door opening upwards, you got a little bit of shelter from the, from the sun, from the rain, staying nice and dry as you're getting ready for bed. Let's talk about clearance a little bit. So underneath to the bottom of the frame is uh, right around 19 inches. And then at your lowest point here, we got just over 17 inches of clearance. So right here we got the KO2s, which actually match the same tires that I have on my Jeep that I pull it with. So some manufacturers sell an RV size queen bed. This is the same size queen that you have at home. Part of why I love the pass-through is right here. If you cook dinner, if it's a little rainy outside, you got a little table right here for the pass-through. If someone's sitting inside, you can pass some food right here. You even got a little bit of a breeze coming through. And on our new models, we even have a little table that's on a slider right here that will slide out right here, 22 inch deep table. Um, you even have your cubbies right here. And then again, on the newer models, um, we have light fixture up here. And we even have a fantastic fan, which is fantastic. Fantastic fan. Open up your ports right here. You press the button and then it sucks all of that air out. You can shut these doors, open up your windows, and it's going to be a nice breeze coming through your trailer. So just want to hit real quick um, on the construction of the sidewalls and the roof and the floor. Um, we have carbon and glass and then carbon and glass with the foam in between there. It does a few things. Um, it helps with uh, vibration, uh, vibration dampening. Uh, it helps insulate, keeping you nice and cool. Um, or warm in the winter when it's cold outside. Um, it also helps add additional strength uh, to the trailer by uh, giving a little bit of separation between the layers of carbon and glass. Over on the side over here, we have power. Um, you have a couple plugs right there, USB, uh, and your Renogy control module right there. This is our smaller trailer. It's not really small size-wise, but it's a lot lighter. This trailer weighs in at about 480 pounds with everything you see here. The unique thing about this trailer is you spend this kind of money for a camping trailer, it's great, but what if you could use it year-round? And this trailer allows you to do that because it's set up as a camping trailer, but this wall comes out. This is our unique latching system. <laughs> we call this our latch flap. Most of these latches we find, even though they say that they're waterproof, they still leak. So we put these on just to give it an added amount of seal. This opens up. And as you can see, we have a kitchen back here. Not a finished kitchen, but one that you can bring all your, your utensils to. Your, your two burner oven or stove. It's got two coolers back here, and it comes with a Yeti Goal Zero. This wall comes out. It only weighs about 20 pounds. And I'll show you right now how fast it comes apart and how light it is. All of our power on this trailer is on the wall. So when you pull the wall out, everything comes out that's electrical at one time. You have two screws, one here, two out, and then it's got two pegs at the bottom on each side that this sits inside of. So essentially you, you pop it off of that, like that, and you bring the shelf right out, and you have a full utility trailer. You pull the mattress out, and you can get eight foot of stuff in here. <laughs> What's your ceiling height in here? Uh, from floor to the top of the ceiling is, God, I'm not even sure to tell you the truth, probably about four eight or so. 
guessing that's four and a half. And both of these, in these beds and both of these trailers fold up into a uh, couch. Before I share the three concerns I have about this trailer, let's talk about the three things I really like. Number one, let's just get the obvious things quickly out of the way. I love the lightweight, the use of carbon fiber to make the trailer stronger and impervious to water. Just to give you guys another example of how solid these things are built, when you shut the door, it's got a nice hard shut, just like a car door. And I love the removable kitchen galley wall. Having a dual use trailer to me, it's hard to put a price on it. Number two, I like that this trailer isn't just coming from some hobbyist garage. Chris and his son, Matthew, bring decades of composite expertise into this design. Uh, we don't come from the RV and trailer industry. We actually come from the sporting good industry. I've started working in the water ski industry when I was 19, 20 years old. Then we started our own wakeboard company, which was the first wakeboard company, WakeTech. And through the years, we built many products. Uh, you can see some of them right here. The Rift brand of snowboards, skateboards. We built wind turbine blades. We built F1 parts for race cars. We've been in this industry for many years. Matthew started molding wakeboards with us at WakeTech uh, when he was 11 years old. So why did you do this? Why did you move into composite trailers? One of the biggest problems that they have in the trailer industry is that when they sell somebody a trailer, they have to usually upside of, upsize their car or their truck or sell them another vehicle. And number three, before I bounce into the things I would improve, I love the simplicity of this design. Because it's made from carbon fiber, my guess is that there could have been a tendency for the designer to make this trailer more cutting edge. This would be what I often define as people trying to reinvent the teardrop trailer. And in my opinion, this is where some manufacturers fail. Like I say often, there is a reason why the standard teardrop design has been so popular for so many decades, especially the kitchen galley layout. Now for the three things I would improve on this trailer. Number one is the fit and finish. When I visited Rift Carbon Campers, I was seeing little details that were not on par with other campers in the industry, especially at this price point. Their choice for accessories and finishes were coming out of what we call on this channel, the large RV industry. And we believe that's not the greatest place to source your materials and knowledge from. Now, let me first say the bones of this trailer are solid. I'm only talking about the finish work here. And even that, my guess is that the finishes have already been updated since I shot this video. During my time with Chris and Matthew, I pointed these little details out. I also suggested that they take a field trip to other small camper manufacturers in the area to give them a better idea of what we as a community expect from a finished trailer. They were very eager to take the feedback and I could tell they were genuinely planning on putting it back into the design. Number two, this one's just semantics, but I think it's important. Rift claimed that this trailer is the strongest full-size teardrop on the market. While carbon is incredibly strong, like anything else, it has its weaknesses. The main one being that it's susceptible to point stresses or high shock. For typical applications like driving on gravel roads or boondocking in national forests and BLM land, I don't have any concerns with this trailer. I truly believe pound for pound, this is the strongest trailer on the market. However, I just want to clarify that although this trailer is strong, most overlanders would not consider this an off-road trailer. There are other composite trailers built more towards handling daily off-road use, but those trailers do come with the trade-off of being 1,500 pounds or more. Although this is the dislike section of the video, I must admit what they built here is what I personally would prefer over an off-road trailer. Most of us don't need an off-road trailer. We need a trailer that can do it all, pavement, gravel, and the occasional off-road use, and that is what they built here. And so that brings me to number three. I really couldn't think of a third issue with this trailer, so consider this to be more of unsolicited advice for Rift and their team. Here are the current prices for their two models. The Rift Utility Camper is $29,000 at base, and the larger Rift Adventure Wagon is $39,000 at base. With this company, I see the potential for a third trailer in their lineup, and that would be an off-road trailer. Not only with the right components and overbuilt design would this truly be the strongest trailer on the market, I think it may also be easier to sell because you're now in a market that fetches top dollar. Imagine a bean or escapade style trailer built with carbon fiber. 
For those of you on a tighter budget, but wanting a lightweight composite trailer, check out this video on the left, which is the walkthrough of the Road Tow Camper by Campin. And for those of you wanting to know more about composite off-road campers, I'd suggest this video on the right, which is a walkthrough of the Black Bean trailer. As usual, stay safe on the road, and we will see you in the next episode.